In the previous video, we talked about understanding reading load charts. Once we understand how to read a load chart, how to interpret a load chart, uh, we are then ready to calculate net capacity and or gross load. Net capacity, gross load calculations, these are two values that crane operators, lift directors, safety managers, any, anyone involved in crane operations needs to be able to calculate these two values. And the mathematical functions involved are very simple. It's, it's addition for the most part with a little bit of multiplication depending on the different steps that are involved. But it's, it's not a difficult process, but it is a process. There are steps involved. And what I wanna talk about in this tutorial is the process, the general process for calculating net capacity and the general process for calculating gross load. There will be additional videos where I actually do sample problems. There aren't gonna be any sample problems in this video. This is just the overview. That's the, uh, that's the uh, prelude to the actual uh, problems or some sample problems. Now there's one concept that we need to talk about that's important and that's the concept of deduction or add-on. These two terms can be used interchangeably for our purposes. A deduction or an add-on are objects adding to the weight of the load or reducing the crane's capacity these objects have to be taken into consideration. And again, this is important for the safe operation of the crane. Crane operators have to do this on a test, but it's also necessary for the safe operation of a crane. If a mistake is, is made with these calculations, or if there's a mistake made reading the load chart, then there's a potential for a company to have a crane collision, have a crane accident. Crashing a crane is nothing nobody wants to happen. Uh, people can get hurt. These cranes can cost millions of dollars. So uh, being able to use the numbers, understand the numbers, is important for crane operations. But back to the PowerPoint. Again, objects adding to the weight of the load uh, or reducing the crane's capacity is what we're talking about with deductions or add-ons. Uh, there will be information, and this is true for every model of crane, every manufacturer of crane, there will be information in the load chart notes or perhaps other crane documents that give us guidance on how to manage deductions or add-ons. Some examples of what would be a deduction. And mostly what I'm focusing on here is the Manitowoc 888. It's going to be slightly different for different cranes. Uh, but wire rope, the hoist line that's used to lift the load, the entire distance from boom uh, or jib tip to the ground, the weight of that wire, wire rope has to be deducted. And that can be extensive. It can be several hundred, if not thousands of pounds of wire rope hanging below the tip of the boom or the, or the jib. And we're talking about, with this deduction, we're talking about wire rope that's actually in use to make the lift. That's it's uh, service or in service wire rope that's being used to make the lift. Also, wire rope that's not being used, that's hanging below the jib or the boom tip. And that's a possibility. Uh, if you're using uh, the main boom and there's a jib uh, uh, attached to the main boom, if you're, you're lifting using the main boom, the jib's out there and there, there may be rope hanging unused off of that jib. The weight of that unused rope below the jib tip has to be deducted. Or maybe it's the other way. Maybe you're, you're using the jib, but you have wire rope hanging off of the main boom. There's a load block and wire rope hanging off of the main boom. You've got to deduct the weight of anything that's hanging on a crane. And wire rope that's in use also. And this will become a lot more meaningful once I get to the, some sample problems. But these are a couple of examples of deductions or add-ons that we need for net capacity and gross load. Uh, if we're making a lift with the main boom and there's a jib attached, but that jib is not being used, the weight of that jib, or the effective weight, to be more precise, the effective weight 
of that jib has to be deducted or it has to be added to the load weight. <clears throat> if you are lifting from the jib, and this is where I've seen operators make mistakes, and this is a uh, something that be easy for you to make a mistake on on the exam or on the, the practice problems. Do not deduct the jib if you are actually making the lift off of the jib. If you're using the jib to make the lift, you don't have to deduct it. There's a separate chart for any lifts made off the jib, and we looked at the jib capacity charts. Because we have that jib capacity chart, that's already taken into consideration the weight of the jib. It's already calculated into that capacity. You don't have to deduct the weight of the jib if you're using the jib to pick up the object. But again, back to this point, again, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but if the jib is attached and it's not being used, it does have to be deduct, uh, deducted. And there's a chart in the load chart, chart notes that will tell us the effective weight of a 30-foot jib and a 40-foot jib. And uh, we'll, we'll take a closer look at that with some of the sample problems. Uh, if there's an auxiliary boom point or a rooster shiv, on some cranes this has to be deducted. The crane that I'm focusing on for classroom purposes, there's not any deduction for the auxiliary boom point. There's no deduction for the auxiliary boom point on the crane that I'm using uh, to illustrate uh, this process. The load block has to be deducted. The weight of the load block, the weight of the overhaul ball has to be deducted. The weight of any rigging that's used to connect the load to the crane, that's a deduction or an add-on also. Any other lifting accessories like a spreader beam or a lifting frame. Sometimes there'll be a, a specialty frame that's built, that's welded together to help handle certain types of loads. The, the frame is not part of the load, but it does uh, need to be deducted or add on to the weight of the load when we're calculating net capacity or gross load. All right, if it's, if it's foggy, and it may be, it'll clear up, I promise. Okay. Another important concept that we need to understand is the gross capacity of the crane. This is the capacity of the crane before taking deductions. What can the crane lift before we consider any of the deductions that, were, that are going to be deducted from the capacity? Uh, think of it as being like your gross pay before taxes and the cost of insurance and other deductions are removed. Gross capacity is like your gross pay on the pay stub. There's two possibilities for what you will use as the gross capacity when you're planning a lift. You're going to use the lesser of chart capacity, which is the capacity found in the load charts, or line pull, the capacity of the line pull, the capacity of the wire rope. You use whichever is lower, the lesser of the two. Uh, line pull capacity will be equal to the capacity of a single part of line multiplied by the number of parts of line. If a single part of line can safely lift 29,500 pounds, we multiply that by the parts of line, the total number of parts of line at 29,500 to get the total line pull. And here's a couple of examples in print here. Uh, if a crane is reeved with four parts of line and the capacity of one line is 20,000 pounds, the line pull is 80,000 pounds. If a crane's chart capacity is 100,000 pounds, and its line pull is 80,000 pounds, the gross capacity is 80,000 pounds, the lesser of these two. If, that, if the line capacity or the line pull is less than the chart capacity, that's the weak link in the crane, and you can't exceed any of the crane's weak links. You've got to find the weakest link 
in the lifting operation and use that as your gross capacity. And it's going to be either the chart capacity or the line capacity. And we'll illustrate that again as I, as I do some sample problems for you. Okay, now we're ready to talk about net capacity. We've talked about deductions. We've talked about gross capacity. Net capacity is your gross capacity minus deductions. Simple. You subtract. Uh, there's a process you got to go through to get to the numbers that you plug into the formula. Uh, that process is outlined up here. You identify all the deduction weights. You total up all the deduction weights. You find the gross capacity, and then you subtract deduction weight from the gross capacity. And once we've done these calculations, we end up with the capacity of the crane that, that can be used to lift a load. That's a, it's the capacity that is available for making the lift. If the load that we're trying to lift or we want to lift exceeds the net capacity, we can't lift it, not safely, not legally. Uh, the net capacity is also called maximum net load. You'll see that on the CCO exam. You'll see that maybe in some other, other literature that talks about crane planning and crane operations. But that's net capacity. Again, every safety manager that works with cranes needs to be able to do this. Uh, not just operators, not just lift directors, but anybody who has any responsibility for the safe operation of a crane needs to be able to do this. I recommend, uh, even if you're not a crane operator, you should take the CCO exams. Uh, that will give you credibility when, when uh, you're involved in lift planning uh, operations. So, but that's net capacity. This is gross load. Back up. Gross load equals the weight of the object we're lifting plus the deductions. Or in this case, it's really more appropriate to call them add-ons because we're taking these objects and we're adding the weight of those objects to the object weight, and that gives us our gross load. Now, you notice I've got two formulas here. This is what I teach crane operators when they're in the test, which is a time test. They don't have a lot of time. I teach them when you write down your formula, just abbreviate it. Don't write the whole thing out. Abbreviate your formula and go back here. This is the abbreviation for the net capacity formula. This is the abbreviation for the gross load formula. Again, the process is very similar to net capacity. Identify deduction or add-on weights. Total those weights. Identify the weight of the object being lifted, then add the total deduction weights to the object weight. And this is the weight of the load. If you know the gross load, then you need to make sure that you have a crane that has enough capacity to lift the gross load, to lift the load. Or you need to make sure that the crane is set up properly for lifting the weight of the gross load. All right, well, that's pretty much the end of this uh, uh, tutorial. There will be four additional videos where I illustrate calculating net capacity, and there's one additional video where I illustrate calculating the gross load. Uh, you'll need to watch the videos, do the practice problems. I haven't got them on Blackboard yet, but I'm going to upload some practice problems. Uh, there will be no solutions. I'm sorry, that, that's a mistake. I'll, I'll upload the practice problems. And once you do the practice problems, you'll complete the crane calculation quiz. And I don't have a due date for that yet, but I'll let you know in class when you need to have the practice problems completed and the quiz completed. The quiz and the practice problems, it will be more than just net capacity and gross load. There will be a mechanical advantage, at least one mechanical advantage problem, and maybe some other problems as well. All right, that's it for this video. I will see you in class.